number of deaths in the U.S. 2018, 2019, 2020. If you put in, as the last caller said, annual deaths U.S. No, per year. Annual, do it right now. Annual deaths U.S. 2019. Okay? So the first thing that comes up is Fast Stats Deaths and Mortality CDC. And I've gotten that uh, like 10 times. And it's misleading because you put in 2019 and the 2018. He didn't say annual. He said total. Oh, he didn't say annual? He said total? Okay, fine. I'll put in total. I'm not saying he's wrong. I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how to find Total deaths U.S. 2019. The first thing that comes up, mortality in the United States 2019. And you have to, There's. it's not as clear as the previous at all. You have to go, it's an article. It's not about data rather than the data raw. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Finally, I get a number. Summary. In 2019, a total of 2,854,000 resident deaths were registered in the United States. So, what do I do next? The obvious. The exact same thing. Total deaths U.S. 2020. All right. Let's see what, what I get up, what I get then. I get USA Facts. Okay, this is relevant to me. I want to get uh, CDC. State, state and national provisional counts. 2020. 12 months ending number of deaths. Is that, a, is that an appropriate... Uh, it only goes to June. No, it doesn't only go to June. Oh, yeah, well, it only goes to June... Okay, so we don't know. Yeah, it's too. It's it, okay. So I don't get the data there. Then I get an a, AP news article. And anyway, there's there's nothing more that I get from the CBC on the, at least the first page. So I'm very obviously. I, I'll be curious to know. Also, 2018. I think 2019 was a low year, but I'm not sure. Anyway, look, if if there were if there were truly 300,000 or so more deaths this year than last year and and the year before and the year before in other words that 2019 was not a fluke of of a low number, then that tells me that COVID has killed a lot of people. I I can't think of another reason why there would be a lot a lot more. My my bigger question, I have two bigger questions than that. Could we have saved a vast number of lives had uh, the uh, medical establishment been uh, honest and told people about hydroxychloroquine and zinc, about ivermectin, about vitamin D, and about zinc? That's the great question. What was the latest study on ivermectin, which was reported at the Senate hearings? Yeah, this is the New York Post yesterday. Cheap hair lice drug may cut risk of COVID-19 deaths by 80%, study says. A simple treatment for COVID-19 could be cheaper than $20 and familiar to most grade school nurses. Head lice drug, head lice drug ivermectin is being explored as a potential treatment for the coronavirus following a promising new study that showed an 80% reduction in hospitalized COVID-19 patient deaths. Just 8 out of 573 patients who received ivermectin passed away, compared to the 44 individuals out of 510 who died after being given a placebo. Poor people. Talk about luck in life. Hey, I'll 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 join this test. And they give you a placebo. An earlier study of the anti-parasitic prescription b- drug, which costs between seventeen and forty-three dollars for a course of treatment, according to Good RX, 
revealed promising results in April by removing all viral RNA within 48 hours of a single dose. Liverpool University virologist Andrew Hill has called a new study transformational in the search for a coronavirus therapy. His findings based on data from over 1,400 patients were made public in a video posted to YouTube. Can't believe they allowed it posted. Wonder if it's still up there. In which Hill, that's the Liverpool University virologist, discusses his results in a previously aired live stream. The research currently awaits peer review prior to publishing. If we see the same trends observed consistently across more studies, then this really is going to be a transformational treatment, said, said Hill. However, critics have called Hill's study conclusion premature, urging further research before declaring ivermectin of an effective treatment. Now, let me ask you a question, ladies and gentlemen. Why on God's earth would you not take it until there are, as you await peer-reviewed studies? If you had cancer and, and a, a number of doctors told you, we have a drug and we've tried it and just eight people died and five times as many died who took a placebo, would you take the drug? Would you think your doctor were a moron if he said don't when there were no side effects? Ivermectin is, is as close to no side effects as anything other than broccoli could give you. What doctor would withhold from a COVID patient ivermectin given results that have not yet been peer-reviewed. So what? Since it can't hurt. Tell me, tell me, what, how does that make sense? Why is my cancer analogy not, not apt? People are scared and scared and scared. They ruin their children's lives. They ruin their marriages. They go back on drugs. Some commit suicide. The anxiety levels are skyrocketing. But they won't take ivermectin. <laughs> God, the contempt I have for, for, for this decision, is, is it, it overwhelms me. And you can't say, oh, it's political. President never, I never heard the president once mention ivermectin. For the left, if the president said it's good to breathe, they would have something, they would find something flawed in breathing. Critics have called Hill study conclusion premature, urging further research. While people die, further research, don't take it. All we have are observational studies and clinicians' opinions, said University of Sydney professor Andrew McLachlan. So why do you advise, Professor McLachlan, people not take it if they get COVID? What's your advice? Many of the current studies have low numbers of participants, weak study designs, and inconsistent and relatively low ivermectin dosing regimes with ivermectin frequently given in combination with other drugs. So what? If it works, it works. When I hear the word professor, I'm so sorry to tell you. I just assume silliness will follow. It's not always the case, thank God. But it's hard for the layperson to know. Will the words following professor so-and-so said, or studies say, or experts say, be rational or irrational, truthful or false? That's the crisis of our time, isn't it? The corruption of these institutions and titles.